Good evening and welcome back to another vlog. Now, today I got a package in the mail and let's just say I'm excited. Uh, let me show you. There we go. This is a Samsung Odyssey G7 gaming monitor with 244, no, 240 hertz. Uh, Response, one millisecond response time, G-Sync, FreeSync, compatible, god damn it my tongue is on a leash today. So today we're gonna unbox it, test it. Uh, depending on the monitor you see it with, once I start testing it on the computer, uh, you might not see a big difference if you've got, got a 60 hertz monitor, but if you've got a higher hertz you'll definitely notice, I think. Well, without further ado, let's start with the unboxing. Now let's begin. Uh, let's. Oh, this is heavier than it looks. There we go. Ah, here we go. Now the reason why I bought a new monitor, I the monitor that I currently have, I'll show you. It is a Samsung, um, I don't remember the name of it, but it's a 60Hz display. 4K, 60Hz display, but this... Oh, hi Felix. He is my very trusty uh, assistant. I think he's wondering what I'm doing. But yeah, uh, currently the Samsung that I use has a 60Hz display and I'm getting more and more into FPS kind of games, and mainly Destiny 2 and stuff. And yeah, I noticed the six hours uh, simply won't do anymore. Installation guide. Yeah, because this, you have to assemble it, I think. At least partially. Ah, huh, they actually do include a CD. I mean, 2021, who uses. Who's got a, a CD room on a computer, unless it's about 10 years old or something? Uh, energy certificate. Yeah, it's got a 60 kilowatt power supply, which is in this bag. Man, that's a big power, external power supply for a monitor. But I suppose at that hertz rate, and the refresh rate and stuff, it probably needs it. You know what perhaps I should do is two handed. Right, now that's all packed out. Now this is of course the stand. There is some assembly to do as you, as you may see. Uh, this is the backbone of the monitor support bracket, whatever it's called, I don't know the proper term for it. Uh, the shroud on the back side. And some more panels. And yeah, let's get starting, let's get started with the assembly, eh? So this is the assembly guide, a quick uh, user manual. So if you're curious and if you need it yourself, well, there it is. Uh -huh. Back. Right, let's get started. Right, step number three. I've gotten out the top part. Then at the bottom is the monitor. Now you gotta assemble this, which is this little bad boy. You know, I have ordered an Elgato keyring light for these kind of videos, but it hasn't arrived yet. It would be filming these kind of vlogs a heck of a lot easier with two hands. Oh, you can take off this back panel and hide cables behind it and stuff, but you know what? I'm gonna need both my hands for this. Never mind, this is just the uh, headset. Uh, tilt or placement. So we just it drag it down and pop it up. Handy. But 
I'm not gonna have my headset mounted on the back of the fucking monitor, that's... I don't have the space for that, I think. Now, it was a little bit tricky getting uh, the back panel of this off, but it's several uh, click locks, or whatever they're called, down both sides. You kind of have to get your finger in up here and then click your way around. Well, at least it is off. Step three complete. What's next? Assemble it to the back, uh, to the back of the monitor. And it appears that the notch you see here, which I guess is this one, you're gonna have to align with the one of the monitor, as you can see. Well, that would be that. Let me see. This is gonna. Oh, I need to remove the tape. <laughs> right here we go. One hand channel. One hand challenge, uh, something, ah, never mind, wait a minute, okay, there are four screws up here, and they are obviously going into those holes, it doesn't say anything about removing the screws, but, but perhaps I should, you know what, it, you don't have to remove the screws, it is possible to pop it in without, This is slightly big. This is our Phillips head screws. And my screw screwdriver is a little bit big. Okay, Felix, you're destroying my box. You know what? I'll allow it. I'll allow it. All right. Let's screw this puppy in place. Somebody's curious. All right, now for the next part. So we gotta flip this little uh, bolt, which is this one, like so. So we gotta align these tabs with the holes in here. So this kind of works as a hand screw. It's supposed to hit. So we can screw it without a screwdriver to lock the legs in place. Yeah, so probably tight enough. Then just pop it back down. And we're on. Ah, that part, which is the ring. Two hand time. Right, I just had to pull it carefully apart and it splits in two, which is supposed to happen. So you take it like so, pop it up, pop it around the back end and twist till you hear a click. Right. Right, now that's in place. You just have a click in place and twist it and it sits and it fits. Awesome. Now for the next part. I don't think there's too much assembly left. Okay, so don't pull it by that side, it might break. Got it. And it got the uh, oh the ports. Because it has got uh, let's see here. It got one HMI port input, two display port, USB C and stuff like that, LAN cable, internet cable, whatever it's called, I don't remember, USB, audio jack, and that's the connectivity of it at least. So now you know. Now, I don't see anything in the drawings about this part, but I suppose this is what you would use if you were mounted to a bracket for a swivel, or on the wall or something like that. Probably a swivel attachment. Which I don't have, nor do I need. Right, now the next part is basically putting it where it belongs, put in the cables, because uh, this, which is which we took out earlier, goes on back here, you can wrap the cables from the ports up here, and it's a good way to hide cables, cable management and stuff. 
So let's go. Oh yeah, right. Uh, this is my old monitor, 60 hertz 4K display. One of the the earliest 4K displays on the work came only in uh, 60 hertz, if I rem remember correctly. But this is the new one, and god damn it, it's a curvy. There's a lot of curve in this bad boy. Thought I'd just show you that before we continue. Kind of a sharper curve in the middle. And the curve slightly flattens here off the edges. Oh. Fancy. Now, I don't know if you guys can see this as well as I do, but damn, this is buttery smooth. It's pretty damn. God damn it. Woo. Not bad, not bad indeed. So to actually turn on 240Hz refresh rate, because it doesn't necessarily do it out of the box. Right click on a desktop, go to screen settings, scroll down to advanced settings, go to properties for the monitor, if you're running several monitors, it's, you know which one it is. And properties for that particular monitor, go to screen, and here you go, 240Hz, this is so click on 240 and use OK. That's it. You've got now got a 240 hertz display. Now, just to make sure your G-Sync and stuff is enabled, open the NVIDIA control panel if you've got an NVIDIA graphics card. I'm not sure if it works the same way with AMD graphics because I haven't used ever used that. So you've got a uh, configure G-Sync, which is here and got it activated on the monitor that is compatible. Now I got one more thing to show you. To access the infotainment system on a monitor, there is a button right beneath the Samsung logo. Here we are. Gives you the source option, uh, the PPPPB options, turn off, and but we are gonna go to menu. If you go here, you can see that 240 hertz refresh rate, adapter sync on, but if you head to gaming, and uh, yeah, you got a refresh rate option here too. But that's oh, that's what I showed you earlier, which you adjust in the settings on your computer itself. We got something called a virtual aim point. So if I turn this uh, on, I now get a uh, aim point that I can also move to a custom place. So if not, <laughs> it's quite handy to have, I guess, once you play FPS games and stuff. I might give it a shot later. So simply go back to game and turn off virtual aim point. We've got a picture of brightness settings. Uh, PIP PVP mode off. I'm not really sure what that does though. I don't really know what PMP PBB mode means. I might Google it and see what's what. And here's the core light dimming. The core light dimming, uh, no, wait a minute, support, no. System. Yeah, this core lightning is the LEDs, which is uh, one there, one there, and the one on the back. Uh, it's a hard to access, so I can't show it to you. And you can pick the color of said lights you can have it off on, on or switch to front only or back only or off well that's it quite easy to use in fact right i don't know if it's too noticeable no. Now that I'm screen recording, because uh, OBS is apparently capped at 60 FPS for some reason. Probably some settings that I haven't checked off. In other case, yeah, it's. Oh, response time is awesome. The colors, resolution, oh, I'm in love. I am literally in love. And the curved aspect of it kind of. Uh, it might put a few people off. 
But honestly, I wouldn't have it any other way. I definitely prefer the curvature of it. It's not too much curvature either as the G9. That would be too much, I think. But that's basically a G9. is basically a three monitor setup in one ish. Yeah, this shit is smooth. Hello, the big fella. Right then, that's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed my vlog. I'll, uh, I have ordered, and I got a key, uh, key ring light. So uh, I can uh, do the vlogging stuff, especially unboxing videos and stuff, far more easier. Just want my phone in the key ring. But it hasn't been shipped yet. So in other case, I hope you all enjoyed this vlog. Leave a like if you did, tell me, comments, tell me in the comments down below what you think. And I will hope to see you guys soon. Right? Good night.